And that's our heart, that, that this church will be able to go outside the church walls and begin leading people to Jesus. So for that, we, for the rest of the year, we're going to be bringing in our sponsored missionaries that we've been supporting as a church just to come and share how God is moving through their ministry, share things that they're learning. And honestly, we have a lot to learn from each one of these men and women that are going to be coming um, so this morning, I have the privilege to invite Larry Austin to come on up. <laughs> Larry, I have been so impressed with Larry. Um, I've heard him share his heart on a number of occasions. He has preached here before, um, mm -hmm. and this is a guy that can bring it. <laughs> so, so I just want to pray for him. And as when I finish praying, all the students we're going to take off to the lighthouse, and we're just going to let Larry go. All right, <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for um, this man of God. I pray that this morning that you speak through him, that you give him all of the words, um, that you teach us what you want us to to know, that you teach us how to operate and how to trust and. And really, how to reach the world around us. Thank you for everything in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, good morning, family. How are you guys doing this morning? Great. Amen. 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 Um, I am grateful to be here um, in this season of my journey to come and share with you. Um, it has been one of the most um, challenging but exciting times in my journey to have God kind of put me in a place to where there's no other option but to do what he's calling me to do, like have the walls closed in on you. I can't go back. <laughs> I keep going forward like he means business. And then to see God not only put me in that scary place, but to be faithful and lead me through that place and then give me a sense of confidence, <laughs> like I know what I'm doing right about now. This is all God's doing, man, to take a nobody and make him understand that he is somebody, not in himself, but in Christ. There was a destiny pre-planned for him. And then God was simply not calling into being that which he already predetermined in life. And so I feel God waking me up to my truest self. And one of the things he told me about this season was no fake humble. Don't be fake humble in terms of turning yourself down to fit in or make things around you comfortable. You have to live loud, right? The way I've created you, you have to be the trumpet. Well, this thing about it, we're all instruments of God. There's a certain note that you and I are supposed to strike on our lives. And he said, man, you better play the note you've been designed to play. Like, that's your cue in the song to make this grand orchestra that I'm making, says God, sound right. We all have a contribution to make. And so I love that I'm here during the season when you're talking about go. Because um, I was a cat that was about go when I was without Jesus. I was going in the wrong directions when I was going. <laughs> I was trying to get somewhere fast as if I knew what I was doing. But then here is God who shows up in my life. Listen, 23 years ago, I just celebrated on March 21st, 23 years of walking with the Lord. And the Amen. Lord has done something amazing. Amen. <laughs> The Lord has done something amazing in my life that 23 years ago, he comes into my life and I'm trying to go play pro football and get my wildest dreams met. And I was willing to even use God to do that. Like, God, I'll come to you. And I came to God, listen to my plan. Hey, God, I'm with you. Here's what, here's what we're going to do. <laughs> God, like, beg your heart. <laughs> And so when God put the brakes on my vision, when I thought immediately, I got God in my life now, hey, I'm going to go up. God was like, no, you're not going nowhere yet. You don't, you don't know nothing. What you going to go say? <laughs> and how do you know it's true? Like, I need to take you on a 23-year journey to understand who I am, says God. And then in understanding who I am, you can find out who you really are. Not who you've been trying to be. Not what other people have may have told you, um, but who you actually are in my eyes. God has to get us along with himself to make that happen. And so it was the most challenging and, and at the same time thrilling because as God began to let me peek into what he had for my future that he had planned back when he stopped that other dream, when he said no to that because he was already saying yes to this. And I'm just now coming around the corner starting to see what this thing is. And so I want to share some of that with you today. But before I do that, I want to share a verse, a couple of verses from a song. Just, um, it kind of is my theme song. I just put out a movie. 
Just think about it. I just probably had a movie, you guys. On New Year's Eve night, I got the revelation from God. And so I call it not a documentary, but a gospel entry. I'm simply <laughs> trying to tell on Jesus of what he's done in my life. But it's called My Life, His Purpose. And the theme of it is we still ball. I went from the football field and giving my all to that game. And God says, now come give me all of that. Now you can get yourself hurt out there. Give yourself your all to that. But come give your all to me. And watch what we're able to do in this world that is broken. And so hear the words in this song. My life is purpose. I was called to live worship. I seen the glory of the king. Now I'm going to die in his service. Even though my heart thirsted after everything but the king. Now I'm addicted like a thing. You know what I mean? I've been called to bring the gospel to these cold streets. Because all I know is if you know Jesus, you know peace. But there's no peace for the wicked and the hypocrite. And I would have died both of those about the Savior's gift. It brought a major shift. So I hit the gas pedal. I didn't know that God was in it like Jacob at Bethel. I'm on another level. I'm warring with the devil. Got a score to settle. I surrender my vessel. My life is yours. It's yours. I surrender all prepared to worship in the war. I got my feet to the floor. And I need the Lord more than I ever have before. I'm sure. Second verse says this, the way is the path, yet the journey or the course that God prescribes for his people. One day I heard his voice. My eyes got moist, tasted glory down in my soul. I got intimate with the king that made your boy whole, new goals in life, loyalty to Christ, teamed up with my wife to lead our kids in the light, and then step into the night and preach the gospel, pray for thunderclaps. No man knows the hour or the day, but Jesus coming back. He ain't having none of that sinful man without excuse. The heavens declare the glory of the Lord. My beating heart is proof. I've been set loose to live for the master's purpose. My life is yours. May it bring worship. My life is yours. It's yours. I surrender all. Prepare to worship in the war. I got my feet to the floor, and I need the Lord more than I ever had before. I'm sure my life is yours. Amen. I'm, I'm trying to, with my life, Live in a way that honors the life that Christ gave us. I can't pay him back. It's not like, oh, I'm going to match you a life for a life. It's just simply to say, I'm going to move in that direction, God. I saw you stretch everything out on the table for us. And so here I am with my life to stretch that out. As I think about the scripture that calls us to attention this morning, I first want to just put in your mindset Romans uh, chapter 1, around verse 8. Apostle Paul is talking to this church that is coming to being through the gospel and he says about this gospel, he says, this gospel I serve with my spirit. He says, my job right now is to serve the gospel. It is to let the gospel place demands upon my life. And now the gospel tells me what I should do with my life. This good news, Christ doing all for us, like this good news that has come to change my life. And it has the power now I see in it to change the lives of all of the people around me who are hurt in the same kind of way. So it manifests differently. They need the same cure. This gospel now comes to arrest me to now help me understand who I really am. The scripture says this, that, that everything that pertains to life and godliness has been given to us through the knowledge <laughs> of Jesus Christ our Lord. Now think about that. Everything that pertains to my natural life, who I am supposed to be in this world. Listen, listen to this. Even disconnected from God, we've been created with certain things already on our hard drive. We are something we've been created to have a certain disposition or a certain outlook. There's certain things already innate in us, and that's who God who put those in us. And he said, now I put those gifts in you for purposes beyond what you can think or even what this world would tell you to use those for. Because I remember being a rapper back in the day. And that's a million things you can rap about. <laughs> now, Jesus wasn't the thing I was thinking about rapping about. But God said, listen, I gave you the gift and the ability, even the passion to keep seeking that out. <clears throat> but that gift was reserved so that Christ would get glory, not yourself. And so it's simply us doing what I think is um, important. At Christmas time, there's a song that comes out that I've been trying to live into. Uh, the Little Drummer Boy. Little Drummer Boy, he said, I don't have much. I may not have what he has or she has, but I got this drum. <laughs> and the king, he seems important. Like everybody's giving him something. I can't, I don't want to be left out. I wonder will he accept the beating of this? Like this is all I got. So I'm going to give him 
this. That's all Jesus is saying to us. The little boy just had a bread and some fish. Just give me that. <laughs> just I could use that. If you give that to me and surrender that to me, watch what I can do. And so something happened to me New Year's Eve. My wife was kind of like, you, she, she, she said this, this was her words, like, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> New Year's Eve night, I come from ministering um, at a church in um, Antioch, and, and God had moved in that service that night. And I just came home, a little tired, and I, um, we had just moved recently, and I had found a box, I'm looking for something else, and in that box, I find this journal. This journal was from the chapter of my life when I first got saved, when I came to God, and we like, in this journal is that plan. Like I wrote out, God, who I was going to be like. I, I was kind of like, all right, God, you, you woke me up. I see you real. Now, here, let's go do this. And, and, and God, in his own gracious way, had me kind of mark that down. Because there's some things in it. Like, we're going to do it. But you're not ready to do that yet. But listen to what struck me when I read this on New Year's Eve night. This is from April 16th, 1995, my first church service after God did something personally on the side and I went to church for the first time and I saw it. This is what I wrote in reflection. Dear Lord, I want to thank you for coming into my life. Thank you for the understanding you've given me. I believe you've chosen me to do great work. I'll do it, no questions asked. Put it on my heart, I believe in you. You lead and I'll follow. I love you and I know you love me too. I owe God my life. He's been so good to me. Thank you. I owe him through the ups and downs. I owe him my life. Whatever he wants me to do, I will do it. And the sentence says at the bottom, prepare to go to work. <clears throat> now, when I read that New Year's Eve night, knowing who that person was that wrote that, he knew nothing about God other than what he had just heard in the sermon. The sermon was, come to Jesus. The brother had preached out of Philippians 3.10, that I may know him. Powers, resurrection, the fellowship of like that's what God charged me with. Come know me. You know a whole bunch of other stuff, but you don't know who I am. And so that was the call God put on my life. I read that that night, and though I knew he knew nothing really about God when he wrote those words, here I am 23 years later, having done a lot for God, if you will, know a lot about God, if you will. And the heartbeat I felt in that night was, oh, that's the same feeling I got right now. I know a whole lot of stuff I've done, but it's just that genuine thing that, God, you've been so good to me. I owe you my life. I'm still saying the same thing. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. In that flash of revelation, he told me to do a move. And I backed away. I'm like, wait a minute. Hold on. The, the connection got unplugged immediately. Do a movie. <laughs> Who am I to do a movie about kind of myself? But God was like, this is not your movie. This is my movie, what you experienced these 23 years, the things that you're going to share, the things that I'm going to send you to go do. These are the things that I've been preparing for. These are the things that I want my people to know. And so that's what I meant when I said the fake humble. Don't be fake humble. Like, if I tell you to do it, <laughs> go do it. And God talked me into doing that. I got that movie done in 76 days. Resources came from everywhere. And now here I am with God getting that movie in my heartbeat. Knowing some of the stuff we have been doing in the community is now getting attention across the country. Other people are tapping in to see how the church is moving and hurting in broken areas in a way that um, it's just like Jesus to come and be all things to all men. Like he would slide next to people. And so here I go on street corners where they sell it dope, it's prostitution, and I come out there with a bag of tacos and a sound system. <laughs> In one corner in particular, um, 8th and Campbell in West Oakland, right by Campbell Village. I grew up in this area, went to the elementary school um, across the street. Like, this is a hurt area. And so I've been sitting up there, like, faithfully. And so what you guys have helped me do over the last three years when I left, listen to this. I left a full-time salary. I left a salary where I was like, I'm good now. <laughs> we can just ride this out of in ministry. And God interrupted that goodness or that settledness. And the gospel began to put a new demand on my life. It's like, okay, this season is up here. Look at those people over there. Do you see they hurt? Aren't you familiar with that kind of hurt? I need you to go back into that area. So for three and a half years, um, I kind of just been throwing myself into the fray. And what God showed me he was doing was not trying to make something rise up overnight. He was saying, I'm trying to let people see a faithfulness that will outlast the impression they have of the church. Because when he first comes, it's like, oh, great. But he's not going to be here long. But for God to give me faithfulness, listen to this. Working three jobs at times so that I could pour myself out. 
I, I, I praise God for this church community because when I came alongside of you, you guys were in the midst of waiting on God to send the next leader here, and I came to help and, and share. So you guys have been a blessing to me to have a few people lean in and say, yes, brother, go do that. That has meant everything to me, especially to know where I'm at right now. To know, man, it took all of that and all of them, the move of the body, to stand with me, to get me to this place now to see God, what you're calling me to do. So what I've been doing for the last two and a half years is head down in Oakland, on street corners, where there's hurt, and I've seen God begin to grow a community of people who look like they're not looking for the church. Now when I don't show up, they, where you been? What's going on? Like, they're waiting on me to show up now because something is happening when the church just comes into that space. I'm not telling them to stop doing anything. I just come out to be a blessing and say, just add this in there. Because <laughs> if this gets in there, if Christ gets inside, he's going to do exactly what he wants to do. I have no doubt about that. I'm not going to be concerned how long it's going to take you to let that go. I'm not preaching against that right now. I'm trying to preach about him right now. Because if you ever see him, and if he grip your heart, the change is going to come. And I'll be standing here waiting in the wings, brother, to help you go further in him. So that's the charge you guys have been helping him to fulfill. And what God did that night in telling me to do the movie was to now say, Larry, this is where you come from. This is what you've been doing. There's people around this country who know that they feel that same feeling. You got like, we got to go outside. We can't just gather. Do you not know that the rhythm of the church is a breathe in and breathe out rhythm? Jesus says to us, come unto me all who are heavy laden, burdened down, and I'll give you rest. Come have a seat. You're tired, I know. Come sit down and let me speak my words to encourage you, fill you back up, get you charged. But you can't sit here forever. You do have to go ye there for I didn't fill you up to sit. <laughs> I want to fill you up so you can go. Nobody goes to the gas station and just stay there. <laughs> fill her up. I'm out. Let's go. Now, I don't know where God is calling you to go. But do you not know that we have a king who's seated on the throne mm -hmm. and he has all power and he's looking at this world that is broken and is torn and it's terrified, it's chaotic, this, all the stuff that's going on in our world. But Jesus is sitting down, composed, and he's simply trying to talk to us about what we need to do. He's saying, get your eyes on me. Don't get distracted. He says, we already got the victory. Get in the huddle. So I can tell you, listen to this, in the huddle is one of the most... Uh, blessed times. There are moments I remember in football when the, it was crazy on the field. And it's a tense game, and the coach would just say, he see it. Time out. Time out. Come here. And I would wonder why he would do this sometimes. Y'all all right, fellas? What are we going to do after the game? I'm like, why are you trying to? We, we in a big game. <laughs> but what he was trying to do was to get us into a quiet, quiet place of confidence. When we're trying to do something for Jesus, I just felt like it was always still over there. But when I got out of the way and said, Jesus, what are you trying to do? It felt like immediately my life hit another gear. The surrender, the getting out of the way. I guess, you know, we drive too slow. When Jesus get behind the wheel, he already knows where he's going. We don't know where we're going. But he knows where he's going. And then one of the scriptures that rose up to me is Psalm 32 and 8. It talks about this. It says, I will guide you with my eye upon you. That night, New Year's Eve night, it felt like God came right there in the room and met with me. And again, I felt a rejuvenation. I will guide you with my eye. You know what that looks like in my mind was this vision of somebody, I can't do a lot of talking right now, but I'm trying to look at you to tell you to go over there. Did you see that? That's, I'm going to guide you, where you are, but I'm going to get your attention. And if you're not moving, I'll do this. <laughs> that night in my hallway, God looked me in my eyes and told me, there. God began to let me see people he had already connected me with around the country who've been doing this type of ministry, have this kind of heart. And it's given me a group of people who have said, look, I'm all in. And what the call was, everybody put their gift on the table and say, hey, I rap, I sing, I do spoken word, I do, I got an artistic bent, and I love the gospel. And I say, what if we were to say, hey, we want to go to cities on tour to share our passion for Jesus, using our arts, but we don't want to sell concert tickets, we don't want to get, like, but we don't want to go high. We want to go low. What if we raise the money to go into hurting areas and simply come in for a three-day weekend, we go visit Jupiter, all the stuff I've been doing in Oakland, like, let's help the church 
understand that if we don't go to these communities in, in a way that looks something like this, then people are going to keep walking by the church. Where I've been ministering at, there are churches all on the corners right where I'm at. <laughs> But they sell adult prostitute like because most of these churches are commuter churches and or they're scared of the people who live in that community because they just drive in and we go home. <laughs> but they don't live there. So that hurt is not they hurt, right? And so they bypass the people. And so it's not a blight, but it's to say, hey, church, hold on. We don't exist just to come inside the building. If, if we only keep inhaling and never exhale, we're going to be in trouble. There is a rhythm that the church has to live in. Take God fully in, breathe him in, and then exhale, like give that out. That there is something, I'm not a scientist, but you know there's something in science that whatever we breathe out, that, that helps other things live, am I right? Mm -hmm. So what God gives us that sustains us, if we give that out, a world that is chaotic and broken, we'll begin to see, not in totality, there's not going to be world peace. There's going to always be tribulation, Jesus said, because i got to leave room for you to know there's no hope or comfort in this world. The only hope and comfort is to be found resting in the finished work of Christ. I am passionate about taking the gospel of God's grace and sovereignty into the hood. Why? Because in the hood, you hear all of the other gospels about getting something from God, getting prosperous, and God trying to give you this and give you that. And it's like you almost tell them a fantasy that God is like, I'm not promising I'm going to do none of that. Uh, you may have challenges. You may never move out of this neighborhood. But listen to this. I'll be with you as you walk and live in this neighborhood. That's the promise of God. And so to be able to bring that good news to say no matter where your journey started, because God's plan trumps where life might take you. Listen to this. You can still have hope in the midst of what feels like a hopeless situation. God can make what feels like a nightmare become actually where dreams are birthed in that soil of challenge. And what God has done for me is to help me identify that. I mean, that's been my struggle. I come from there. So how, how can I not go and take the gospel back in that way? And so what God has given me is this community thing called All In Nation. That what we've been doing in Oakland, God says, I want you to fan the flame around this country to get with other people who feel like you and go into the communities and just go to the community right on the street level and give out the gospel and let what you've seen happen in Oakland happen around the country so that there could be a revival in areas where there's hurt. There's so much lack of truth in areas where there's so much desperation, people clinging for anything. And so that's why all these other false gospels are working. The gospel said, man, God said, go blow the trumpet of the true gospel of God who saves in those communities. And that's what I've been on these last couple of years and to see what God has done. And so this movie that we just put out has begun a campaign. I am flying on March, uh, April 29th to go to Louisiana, which is one of the stops on the tour. We're going to premiere the movie. I was going to share a piece of the movie here today and you may get a chance to see it. Uh, I'll give you the website. I'll give you the website. It's free on my, on my website. You can go and watch it at your own leisure. But again, go into other cities that are part of this 10 city tour to really share the vision and the mission that God has given us to say, hey, church, let's mobilize because we got to go in the community. And then we're going to say, hey, this is what this evangelism could look like in this kind of way as we go to the streets in those areas. And the game plan is to be in Oakland two weekends a month, pouring my heart and my life out in the streets continuous, mm -hmm. and then two weekends a month, we're traveling into these 10 partnership cities to keep fanning the flame, finding out what are the hot buttons over here? How can the gospel address that? We want to go into the juvenile halls, into the prison system. But basically, everything I've been doing in Oakland, he says, now go help get that set up in other cities and watch a revival rise up right where there's hurt. Right where people, because again, it's been crazy and beautiful for me to see. Here I am rapping on the street corner and to see the magic of God. I see people getting out their car, they're not looking for Jesus, they're going into the liquor store, and all of a sudden I see this. They back up like, what is this? Listen to this. Strange sight. This guy that's out here on the corner rapping like, and I, I can't understand what he's saying yet, but he looked like he's saying something the way his body moving, and people draw near. And the next thing I know, if there are people who are remembering their childhood, remembering their journey with God, and there's people getting prayer. So it's just like this strange thing that God had to listen to this and talk me into. Because I'm like, I mean, I may go do this once, but keep, like, you want me to, like, this is the thing I do. Let me say a quick story, and I'm going to get ready to close. Good Friday, I was um, preparing to do something on 14th and Broadway in Oakland and just kind of go bear witness to the gospel, a place that we normally regularly go and minister at. 
Um, the officers there know me, all of that. And so this day we're setting up and one of the officers comes and says, you can't do it, you need a permit. I'm like, I'm kind of like, but you know me. Like we, we, you know I do this, you know I just already cleared it with the store. Like everybody is good, like watch. He's like, you gotta have a permit today. And he's kind of like giving me the cold shoulder. I'm kind of like frustrated with him. Like, like all the stuff going on in Oakland on Good Friday, you gonna shut me down? So I had to pack up and leave. And so I go try to find another spot. The spot I look like, nah, I come kind of back close to that area. I see that there's a, a, a line of people. There's this pop-up restaurant called Chef Smell. So I'm like, it's a nice, probably about 100 people in line. But you know, I'm like, they won't mind no music. It's Good Friday. So I go sit up across the street. <laughs> Five minutes into that moment, Snoop Dogg pops out his limo and comes and gets in my video. Because, you know, we put it on Facebook Live. And he's singing the song with me. And... I'm like the next day, hey, I got this video with Snoop Dogg <laughs> that I get to share with the world. Well, I go on social media and Snoop Dogg had already shared it. Uh -huh. That thing was at a, a 1.3 million <laughs> the next day. With Jesus saying something about it, <laughs> it got into my head and he got Snoop singing the song with me. <laughs> With Jesus' name being proclaimed, and all of a sudden, think about this. On Easter Sunday, my CD, which just came out, which was free on my website, came out. So again, God was saying to me, I'm going to give you free promotion. <laughs> and here was the beauty. Again, here I am upset with the officer. But that was God doing that on purpose. Five minutes into it, here he comes. And here's this moment of God just again reminding me, no, I'm going to take this somewhere. This is not really even about you. There's something I've put in you that I've got to put forward because I want to return on my investment. And so I simply say to you who are being compelled into mission, um, it's, the, it's, it's what we were created for, like actually saved for. When you read the book of Acts, you have to read that as one of the most thrilling, like they were on an adventure. <laughs> Their lives were awakened. To have their lives taken up with something bigger than themselves and have God actually just imagine. You go to preach the gospel in the city square and they throw you in jail. And you don't have a pity party when you get down in jail. You actually get to worship it and sing it to the God who allowed you to get thrown in jail. But then you feel the jail cell bust open and you know who's doing it. And then you see the jailer run in who was about to kill himself and he gave his life to Jesus. Then you go to his house and his whole family get baptized. You're like, well, what else, Lord? What else you want to do? Like, let's go. To have your life taken up but his mission and purpose is not is not easy because he um, he has to he has to test us. He has to get us in a position to be able to don't move. I don't care what what happened. Like you have to have your shoulders squared back and have your feet set to be in position because we're his ambassadors, and that means we have to be drawn so near to God so that He impresses His heart upon us, and that's what we go give to this world. So I don't just say go. Remember the first call is come. Sit down. For 23 years, he said, sit down. You're not ready. And here's my last thing I will say. This. When I was coming out in that beginning, my agent, so I was in Sports Illustrated, possible draft pick, all that, and I was actually good on the field. And so it was supposed to happen. I told my agent, I just want it to happen. I'm going to go away, and we just will come back. I'll be on the team. So he gets me a last-minute ticket. We go up to a Nevada Reno. And um, <clears throat> I go to Nevada Reno. It's like the last hotel room. So the hotel room was like a handicap room, which meant there was no lights, no street access. It was just a wall next to the thing that you can't see nothing. It was almost as if God was saying, we're not going nowhere right now. <laughs> we ain't going nowhere right now. But on my spiritual birthday this year, 23 years later, with this vision in my heart, with all of the stuff God has been doing, Three months prior, me and my wife had bought some tickets. Southwest had tickets for like $49, wherever you want to go. Where you want to go, babe? Okay, we'll go to Vegas. So we bought the tickets. And then so here it's set up. And here I am in Vegas, the hotel room that my wife got set up. We on the strip. It's lights everywhere. It's, it's, it's time now, says God. Now we're going into this world that thinks this is everything. <laughs> We're going to go into this world right where they at, and we're going to point them to the one who is everything. And so what God is calling me to do now is to go to the forefront using rap music in a way that is going to not make me famous, but it's going to take a gospel truth to the forefront of where people are like, I won't listen to the preacher, but I'll listen to the rapper right now. <laughs> so God said, I'm just going to sneak the preacher inside the rapper and send the rapper right on out there. <laughs> 
rap on, preach on, brother. <laughs> and perhaps God might change somebody's destiny. God might awaken somebody to hear through those few bars of rap music, something that's just a throwaway thing, and God can use it as a mighty weapon in his hand to make a truth known to a person who can only hear it if they turn it in that direction. And so, Father, I thank you. I thank you for your people. I thank you for those who, who understand um, we all have a lane. We're not called to, to do what each other do per se. You've gifted us all uniquely. The Bible says we've been fearfully and wonderfully made, which means you took care in creating us. You were concerned that we had everything within us that we needed to fulfill the charge. And now it's about giving that back to you. And say, Father, you, you order my steps. You reshape. You inspire. You uh, reinvigorate me to be about your mission. Father, I pray for the community here. I pray that you would continue to help them collectively um, and then individually. You know, we all have a role to play in your greater mission, which is to make Christ known. Because there's one hope we have in this world. There's no other hope down here but in him. <laughs> We thank you. Thank you for your word. And as we, we venture forward next week, may you help me get a sense of where the community is and, and help me shape my words as I come back next week to uplift your people further into that mission. We give you praise and we give you glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Bless us. Amen.